Palm Olive Soap, Colgate Dental Cream, and Palm Olive Shave Cream bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. One of the truly fine friendships Our Miss Brooks has made in her years of teaching English at Madison High School is the one with her landlady, Mrs. Davis. Their friendship is so close that there are times when each knows what the other is thinking without either saying a word. No, not one word. All Mrs. Davis has to do is raise six fingers... And I know just how many weeks I'm behind in my room rent. <laughs> and all I have to do is make a circle with my thumb and forefinger, and she knows how much chance I has of getting it. <laughs> However, last Thursday morning, when another week's rent was due, Mrs. Davis was at a meeting of her ladies' aid club, preparatory to inaugurating their new clubhouse that evening. Taking her place at breakfast with me was one Walter Denton, who usually managed to eat as if he were free Walter Denton. On <laughs> Thursday, he was doing his best to live up to his reputation. You enjoying your breakfast, Walter? <laughs> Just nod your head, boy. No words could possibly escape through that barrier. <laughs> well, pardon me, dear teacher, but you caught me with my jaws chock full of Mrs. Davis's salubrious victuals. <laughs> I know. The trick is to catch you when they aren't. Now, if you're through, we'd better be on our way to school. All right. Uh, but first, I have something to show you. Really? What? Well, if you'll step to the window and pull up the blinds, I'm sure you'll get a big surprise. What are you going to do? Push me out? <laughs> Come on, Miss Brooks. It's standing right in front of the house. All right. Let's see what it is. There. Feast your lovely orbs upon it, dear teacher. Your newest means of transportation. Where? All I see out there is a broken-down moving van. Isn't she a beauty? I own it. So I rather Bone Snodgrass and I own it together. We traded our jalopies in for the moving van the day before yesterday. As soon as we saw it, we knew this would be the perfect business for the firm of Denton and Snodgrass. A firm that combines brawn and brains. Really? Who's the third partner? <laughs> oh, you're the brains. Yes. Yeah. And to prove it, I already have our first order uh, from Mrs. Conway, a friend of my mother's. She wants the stuff delivered tomorrow morning. Yes, out in yonder van is her entire one-room suite of furniture, a complete chandelier. Oh, good. My one ambition has always been to ride to school hanging from a chandelier. <laughs> so far, you've had me hanging from everything else. <laughs> I'm not kidding, Miss Brooks. This venture is the most important of my life. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm still faced with one or two problems, one of which I feel certain you can help me with. How? Oh, it's very simple. It concerns where I'm going to leave my moving van overnight tonight. I thought you'd persuade Mrs. Davis to let me leave it in her driveway. Uh, would you, Miss Brooks? Well, I suppose... Oh, thank you, Miss Brooks. I knew you would. <laughs> well, now that that's all settled, I guess we'd better be on our way to school. Yeah, unless you want to pick up something before we go. Only the rest of my last sentence. <laughs> However, I suppose you could leave the van in our driveway overnight, since Mrs. Davis won't be using her car till it's repaired. Now, we'd really better get going. Unfortunately, I have to see Mr. Conklin first thing this morning. You do? Well, now that is a coincidence, as since Mr. Conklin happens to be the second problem you can help me with. I'm sorry. One truck is all our driveway can handle. <laughs> that is, you'll have to handle Mr. Conklin yourself, Walter. No, it won't be difficult, Miss Brooks. It's just that I have to drive this van past his office window to put it in the school parking lot. And if he happens to see it, he's liable to erupt like old faithful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our boy is at least twice as juicy. But uh, I fail to see how I'm... All gonna... you have to do is keep him from looking out of the window for a few minutes, Miss Brooks. I guess I could do that. Well, of course you could. But just keep him looking at you. That's an idea, Walter. If he can spoil my morning, I can spoil his. <laughs> but I stood. I promised the ladies you'd speak when we inaugurated our new clubhouse tonight. Can't you possibly make it? Martha, there's nothing I'd rather do. Nothing in the world. <laughs> 
But can I help it if I have to be out of town tonight on business for Mr. Stone? Oh, I suppose not. But this business for Mr. Stone certainly came up awfully suddenly. Well, you told me about the meeting awfully suddenly. Uh, that, that, that is, I, I would have let you know sooner, but I didn't think it was necessary until you told me about the meeting. Well, it certainly seems strange to me. You had to go out of town for Mr. Stone the last time my ladies' aid group asked you to speak, too. Uh, the man has a simply uncanny knack of picking just the wrong knife. <laughs> good. It isn't the $50 you were asked to contribute after we inaugurated our last clubhouse, is it? Magnolia Blossom. <laughs> How could you even think such a thing? Yet for a moment, I thought it was the $50. Poopsie girl. <laughs> How could you doubt your Osgood? Oh, just a moment, Martha. There's someone at the door. Come in. Good morning, sir. I have the report. Oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. Excuse me, my wife's hanging on the phone. Well, quick, cut her down. Oh, you're you're speaking to her. Well, go right ahead, sir. I'll wait. Hello, angel eyes. (laughs) Just put all those horrid doubts out of your mind. When your Osgood says he has to go out of town on business for Mr. Stone, your Osgood means exactly that. I'll see you before I go. Goodbye, Pat. <coughs> Miss Brooks, can you imagine my wife not wanting to believe I have to be away from home overnight? Seems incredible to me. Then you really have to go away on business, your Osgood, uh, Mr. Conklin? <laughs> of course I have to. Do you think because my wife's ladies' aid group wants me to speak and perhaps contribute $50 tonight that I'd resort to the twin shames of deceit and subterfuge? Which hotel are you staying at in town, sir? Oh, I wouldn't dare stay at a hotel. It's much too risky. It's your so <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you must know, I simply can't afford the $50, Miss Brooks. And now that my secret is out, perhaps you can help me find a place to sleep tonight. Oh, I'd like to, sir, but our driveway is already spoken for. <laughs> Most of the people we know are members of your wife's group. I know, and if she ever finds out of it. <laughs> what was that? What was what? Those sounds outside my window. That was either a truck backfiring, or those were shots. I knew someone would catch up with Miss Enright sooner or later. <laughs> This is Carl and Mike. Once again, we are continuing our on-the-spot reporting from the Boulevard Car Wash at Maple and Niagara Falls Boulevard. Yes, now that winter is here, it's even more important that you keep your car clean. Yes, Mike. With all the dirt and salt that a car can collect on today's streets, a car can really start to rust away. But a -a once-a-week wash at Boulevard Car Wash at any of the three locations, this one at Niagara Falls Boulevard and Maple the one at Orchard Park Road and Southwestern Boulevard, and South Park Plaza Hamburg, all will give you the finest wash available. Well, we might as well get to it, Carl. We're off into the wash. Mike, roll up your window. It's stuck, Carl. It won't go up. Well, Mike, do something. The water's coming in. It won't move. Right in here, sir? I don't know when I've seen such a glare from the sun. I'd better pull down your shade. Glare from the sun? What are you talking about? How could there be any sun in here this time of morning? My windows face west. Well, uh, the the days are getting awfully short this time of year. (laughs) Anyway, there's no use waiting till the last second. Now, I'll just pull... That, that, That is a truck backfiring. Well, I'll soon see what it's doing outside my window. Oh, but Mr. Duncan, I'm certain. Holy cow, it's a moving van. And Walter Denton's driving it to our parking lot. What is that idiot Denton doing with a moving van? Maybe his books are heavier than the other two. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you didn't want me to see that van pass my window, did you? Now, suppose you tell me what this is all about. Well, since you've already seen it, sir, I suppose there's no harm in telling you that Walter and Bone Snodgrass have gone into the moving business together. They've gone into the moving business? Yes, sir. They've already got their first order from a Mrs. Conway. Her entire one-room suite is on that van. They're delivering it tomorrow, and they just need a place to put their van till they collect the money for it. Tonight, I'm letting them leave it in our driveway, and I... Ah, so you're a collaborator on this scheme. 
a scheme which is against all the rules of the school. Using school property to conduct a full-time business is the severest offense I can conceive of. An offense demanding instant expulsion from... They've got a one-room suite on that van. <laughs> I tell them they can re-enroll now, sir. Brooke, is that a complete one-room suite? Yes, sir. Complete with chair, bed, and built-in principal. It's got a... <laughs> mm, I think it might be just what I'm looking for, Miss Brooks. Yes, just what I need. A perfect place to spend the night. Now, no one must know about this, Miss Brooks. Oh, no, sir. Neither students nor faculty. This is a secret which you must carry with you to your grave. Understand? Yes, sir. If I don't, that may happen a lot sooner than I expect. Miss Brooks. Uh, Miss Brooks, wait a minute. Oh, hello, Mr. Barton. How's everything? Well, Miss Brooks, I'm faced with a problem. Uh, now, I don't want you to think I'm crying on your shoulder. Just put your head there and let me worry. <laughs> Mr. Barton, what's your problem? Well, um, it's the same old thing. Uh, that is, it's something old and yet something new. Make that something borrowed and something blue and I might get interested. <laughs> I still don't know. Well, understand. I'm slightly in arrears in my room rent to Mrs. Miller. But we're all slightly in arrears in our rent, Mr. Boynton. How much are you behind? Counting this week? Yes. Three months. <laughs> I'll give you Mrs. Davis in six weeks. Hey, you are in trouble, aren't you? Up to my neck. Mrs. Miller is so angry, she threatened to hand me my eviction notice if I didn't have some of the rent by tonight. Uh, she's stopping by before her ladies' aid meeting at 8, and again when it's over. Well, what are you going to do? Well, the only thing I can do is find some other place to stay overnight. Oh, I know by tomorrow she'll calm down and reconsider. However, I did think of one possibility, a place you could help me with where no one would think of finding me. Where, I'm reasonably certain... Well, now, now, don't laugh when I say this, but Walter's moving van would be perfect for my purposes. That's not a moving van. That's a hotel. <laughs> Boy, I'd like to help, Walter but... told me it'll be in your driveway overnight, and if you'll let me stay there, I'll be in your debt as long as I live. Well, all right, Mr. Boynton, but there's something I'd better warn you about in case you wake up in the middle of the night. What's that? If you happen to find two feet in your face, don't be alarmed. They're not yours. Hi, I'm Pinocchio, the big nose and all that. You know, but seriously, lots of kids don't know about me. How can kids read if they don't have any books? And millions of kids, black, white, red, yellow, brown, all races, live in homes without any books. Getting books into the hands of these girls and boys is what the national program, RIF, Reading is Fundamental, is all about. Here's what RIF has found out. When kids choose the books they want because the subjects interest them and they own the book, that makes reading fun. And when reading is fun, it's just fundamental. Books widen a kid's world and their abilities and their whole life. Every community needs RIF. Find out what you and RIF can do in your community. Just like RIF. Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C., 20560. That's RIF, R-I-F, Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C., 20560. Right now, if America's to grow up thinking, reading is fundamental. Now, do you have your pencil and paper handy? A free gift is yours, a handy guide to available old-time radio shows, and to get yours, merely send your name and address on the back of a box top, any box top, or a reasonable facsimile thereof to this station, WBUF Box 96, Buffalo, New York, 14209. It's free. There's no obligation. And remember, your name and address on the back of any box top may live to this station for your free gift. Compliments of Radio Rides Again and our sponsor. Let Walter leave his moving van in Mrs. Davis's driveway overnight. I had no idea I'd have to put a quiet do not disturb sign on its rear doors. But with Mr. Conklin and Mr. Boynton persuading me to let them use it as sleeping quarters for the night, I felt like a desk clerk without portfolio. 
<laughs> I was quietly cursing the brains of the firm of Denton and Snodgrass on my way to the school cafeteria at noon when I happened to run into the brawn. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Bones. How's everything with Denton, Snodgrass, and company? I think you made a mistake, Miss Brooks. A mistake? Yes. Does my brother Fred Snodgrass and me? <laughs> Bones Snodgrass, but there ain't no one named Denton Snodgrass. I'm talking about Walter Denton. Oh, well, I'm going to meet Walter after lunch. And boy, have I got some good news for him. You have? Yeah. Well, that Walter thinks he's so smart just because he got an order from Mrs. Conway. Wait till he hears about the order I got. Mrs. Davis gave me an order to move all her furniture from her old clubhouse to a new one tonight. Mrs. Davis can't do this. Not with Mr. Boynton and Mr. Conklin to sleep. Uh, Excuse me, Bones. I've got to make a phone call in an awful hurry. All the people to pick to give the moving job to, I can't... Hello. Hello, Mrs. Davis. This is Connie. Oh, Connie, could you call me back a little later? I'm expecting phone calls from Maud Richards, Peggy Lowell, and Sally Norton about the clubhouse inaugural tonight. If I talk to you, I'm liable to get all confused. You won't get confused. <laughs> I want to talk about clubhouse business, too. Well, all right, if you say so. What is it, Maud? <laughs> Mrs. Davis, please. Look, I'm calling about the moving job you gave Walter and Bones Snodgrass. You've got to cancel it. But why, dear? Walter and Bones are such nice boys. They deserve to get a start in business. Of course they do. And I wouldn't ask this of you unless there was an excellent reason. I'll tell you what it is if you'll keep it a secret. Promise me you'll forget it as soon as I tell it to you. Oh, you can trust me, Sally. <laughs> I can't think of anyone I could trust more. All right, Mrs. Davis, the reason I'm asking this favor is that Mr. Conklin and Mr. Boynton are going to be in the moving van tonight. Really, dear? Who gave the order to move them? <laughs> They're sleeping in it, Mrs. Davis. Neither of them wants it known where they are for one night. How exciting. They're hiding out. Well, trust me to dummy up, kid. I wouldn't squeal when two of the barber keep it under cover from the bulls. <laughs> oh, fine. Our television set has been fixed again. <laughs> <laughs> then you will call Bones, Mrs. Davis. Of course I will. Can I depend on it? Just as soon as I hang up? I'll do it as soon as you hang up, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Bye, Hortense. <laughs> Gosh, Walter, I don't understand what happened. This dame gave me the order, and an hour later she calls back and cancels it. Well, don't let it bother you. I got another order myself a little while ago. The biggest order we've had so far. Hey, that's great. Who'd you get it from? Uh, from Mrs. Conklin. I phoned her a half hour ago, and we're moving all the furniture from our old clubhouse to her new one tonight. <laughs> How's that for using the old bean? Boy, I gotta hand it to you, Walter. I wish I had thought of that idea. <laughs> Gosh, Miss Brooks, I, I don't understand the rush to get over here. It's only 8 o'clock. I wanted you to get comfortable before Mr. Conklin arrives. But you said he wouldn't be here till 9 o'clock. That gives us an extra hour in this moving van. I know. A little hour. Alone. A crowded moving van. Just the two of us. You and me. <laughs> Down, shall we, Mr. Boynton? Say, I just noticed. There seems to be a lot more furniture in here than earlier in the day. Extra chairs, tables, that big couch. Probably the rest of Mrs. Conway's suite. Sit down, Mr. Boynton. Well, maybe so, but those pictures of Washington and Jefferson weren't here earlier either. Uh, no, this huge American flag. No, they weren't. Sit down, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> what would Mrs. Conway be doing with a huge flag in her room? Maybe she likes to salute before she goes to bed. <laughs> Uh, this couch is nice and comfortable. You know, Miss Brooks, this situation would really be rather humorous if it didn't have such serious overtones. Did you ever imagine we'd sit huddled together in a crowded moving van, just the two of us, with just a dim light bulb between us and complete darkness? You haven't got a BB gun on you, have you? <laughs> 
Well, I suppose we might as well do something while we're waiting for Mr. Conklin to arrive. Yes, we might as well, mightn't we? <laughs> we might as well do that. We certainly might. <laughs> now, what would be something for two people to do in the sunny darkness of a gloomy new day? and I'm already puckered up. <laughs> oh, I've got it, of course. Let's play ghosts. <laughs> Why play it? I already am one. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, if playing ghosts is the only thing you can do... <laughs> Good evening, Miss Brooks. Very haunted. Oh, I wasn't expecting you so early, Mr. Conklin. Apparently not. Mr. Boynton, what are you doing here? Miss Brooks... Does Boynton know about me? Yes, sir, but you don't know about he, him. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, this is your new bunkie. My new bunkie? <laughs> yes, sir. You see, since we're both in the same boat, trying to avoid a member of the Ladies' Aid Club for one night, Miss Brooks and I figured you wouldn't mind if I slept here with you. I'm no trouble at all during the eight hours I'm asleep. And to prove it, just watch him the 16 hours he's awake. <laughs> I don't care what kind of a roommate you are, Boynton. Well, folks, the doors was open, so I just nod grass. Nod grass? What are you doing here? I think you made a mistake, Mr. Conklin. There's my brother, Strep Snodgrass, and me, Bone Snodgrass, but... We know I... there's no Snodgrass, Snodgrass. <laughs> but what are you doing here, Bones? Well, I might as well ask you all the same question. It's my moving van. Yes, but it's our question. <laughs> Well, Wall and me have got this furniture to deliver right away. So far, this deal has been nothing but a lot of angry ovation. Anger ovation? Yeah, you know. Exact perspiration. <laughs> oh, you mean irritation. <laughs> That's it. Now, if you'll step inside, Miss Brooks, I'll pull up the ramp. What? Uh, it's not grass. Uh, where, where are you taking us? All right, Wall. Let it go! Let it go. <laughs> Miss, Miss Brooks... We're moving. Uh, yes, sir. That's what frequently happens with a moving van. <laughs> I'm a corporate lawyer, and I'm one. I'm a pediatric nurse, and I'm one. I'm a student, and I'm one. I'm a housewife, and I'm one. I'm a bus driver, and I'm one. I'm a fashion director, and I'm one. Everyone can be a pollution fighter, but everyone isn't. It's too bad, too, because we need as many as we can get. We need them to pick up litter. We need them to stop cars from polluting and leaves from burning. We need pollution fighters to take action in their communities against the problems that are choking our environment. We have to have them if we're to clean up our air, our lakes and rivers, our highways and our forests. It doesn't take much to become a pollution fighter, just a desire to make our land as beautiful as it used to be. Write to Keep America Beautiful for a free booklet, 71 Things You Can Do to Stop Pollution. That's Keep America Beautiful, Box 1771, Radio City Station, New York, New York. People start pollution. People can stop it. I insist that you tell us immediately where we're going. It'll only take a couple of minutes to deliver this furniture to your wife's ladies' aid club, Mr. Conklin. And we'll have the van right back in the driveway. Oh, well, if it'll only take a couple of minutes to deliver it, I certainly won't be unreasonable about, about it. Particularly since we'll be using the van for the... Deliver this furniture to my wife, ladies! <laughs> deliver the furniture to Mrs. Carson's ladies' aid club? I vote aye and make it unanimous. The dog grass. Have Denton stop this van immediately! Immediately! <laughs> Stop this truck at once! Halt, I say! Looks like he's forgotten the password. <laughs> he can't possibly hear you, sir. All this furniture has made the interior sound clue. Yes, but Miss Brooks, in another minute, we'll be at the new clubhouse. What am I going to do? I've only got one more minute. Now, please, Miss Brooks, help me. All right, you start thinking of a speech while I look through your pockets for the $50. <laughs> <laughs> the only other thing I can think of is for you to hide, sir. Good, good, very good, yes. Now, where will I hide? How about the big couch, sir? You could stretch out under the soft cushions. Yes, good idea. Under the cushions. But are you certain no one will see me under them? Even if they did, it would look like nothing but more cushions. <laughs> Miss Brooks, can I use the couch, too? Nothing doing. You had your chance before. <laughs> get the 
behind the couch. Now hurry up, the van's stopping. Oh. Bones, lower the ramp and then go up front and tell Walter to stay up there until I can get rid of Mrs. Conklin. Okay, Miss Brooks. Surprise. Oh, hello, Mrs. Conklin. Are you here to help us launch our new clubhouse? Just hand me a champagne bottle and stand back. That is, I felt since Walter and Bones were driving over anyway, I'd come along looking at... Oh, it's a madhouse in there, my dear. A hundred women milling around and practically no furniture. Why don't we just sit on the couch in the van and talk? <laughs> oh, sit on the van in the couch? I mean, sit on the man in the couch? Oh, I mean... <laughs> on the couch for the van? <laughs> we can't sit on the couch, Mrs. Conklin. Well, why not? Nothing happened to it on the way over, did it? Uh, that's it. Something happened. Something dreadful happened to the couch. Really? To its legs? Uh, that's it. It acquired two more. <laughs> it lost two. Well, it looks perfectly all right to me. I'm sure whatever happened won't prevent us from sitting on it. Oh, no, really, Mrs. Conklin. Don't sit there. You'd better not. Hey. <laughs> what was that? What was what? When I sat down just now, I heard an oof. Uh, that was I. When you sat down, I said you'd better get oof. <laughs> wrong with this couch. Why, it's dirty as can be. Look, to prove it, I'll stand up and flop right down on it. Oh! <laughs> now, just watch. You see, nothing happens when I fall down. <laughs> don't, uh, don't tell me you didn't hear that, Miss Brooks. Uh, maybe the couch creaked. Many couches do that, you know. I... I heard a groan. Very few couches do that. <laughs> We'd really better go in. There's, there's someone under those cushions. Oh, no, they couldn't possibly. Miss Brooks, there's a body under there. Don't be alarmed. I doubt if it's still alive. <laughs> well, I, I'll just take off this cushion and... Hello, poopsie girl. <laughs> Conklin, of all the low-down, underhanded, malicious... Yeah, twinkle toes. <laughs> Give your husband a chance to explain. Oh, don't even try, sir. Mrs. Conklin, there is only one explanation that covers all situations like this one. One explanation? What's that, Miss Brooks? Your husband was standing on a corner, minding his own business, waiting for a moving van. <laughs> Oh, after Mr. Boynton was discovered, too, I really got busy and thought up a whale of a story. I practically convinced Mrs. Conklin that both her husband and Mr. Boynton had done this merely to surprise her and help with the clubhouse inaugural. Well, I, I still can't quite believe it, Miss Brooks, but I know Mrs. Miller will be as delighted to see Mr. Boynton as I am to see Osgood. Uh, did my landlady mention me this evening, Mrs. Conklin? Well, yes, she did, Mr. Boynton, but... I forget what it was about. This has been such a hectic night. Oh, dear. Frankly, I don't see why we moved at all when we'll only use this new clubhouse for a few hours, twice a week. You mean you only meet here twice a week? That's right. The rest of the week, it's dark. It is? Well, uh, don't be surprised if you happen to be passing some night and it's not completely dark, Mrs. Conklin. Why, what do you mean, Miss Brooks? Mr. Boynton tells me he likes to read before he goes to sleep at night. Tune in next week, same time, same station, for Radio Rides Again. Brought to you by the Boulevard Car Wash with three big locations. Niagara Falls Boulevard and Maple, Orchard Park Road and Southwestern Boulevard, and South Park Plaza Hamburg. No matter what the size of your car, Boulevard Car Wash will do an expert job. Boulevard Car Wash reminds you to remember to send in your box tops. This is the Empire State FM Network.